الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا مزيدا إلى يوم الدين أما بعد الحمد لله ثم الحمد لله for the great blessing of living to reach Ramadan a true blessing a blessing many in their graves desperately wish to have an opportunity at a blessing many onlookers will regret they did not take advantage of even though there's no specific proof on congratulating one another for the start of Ramadan, there's general proof on the permissibility of greeting one another in general matters upon receiving glad tidings and good news. We all know the story of Ka'b bin Malik and his two partners. When Allah revealed their forgiveness after they were ordered by the Prophet ﷺ to be abandoned in Shan, in Surah At-Tawbah, Allah said, وَعَلَى الثَّلَاثَةِ الَّذِينَ خُلِّفُوا He declared there for, that He has forgiven them. When it was revealed, people went to them in groups, congratulating them. Ibn Al-Qayyim, rahimahullah, and Zayd Al-Ma'ad commenting on the story said, that's proof that any Imanic blessing is something one may embrace another on and congratulate him for. Ibn Muflih narrated many opinions that Imam Ahmad said pertaining to this matter. But at the end he said, the most popular opinion is that Imam Ahmad permitted it. قُلْ بِفَضْلِ اللَّهِ Allah said, قُلْ بِفَضْلِ اللَّهِ وَبِرَحْمَتِهِ فَبِذَلِكَ فَلْيَفْرَحُوا هُوَ خَيْرٌ مِمَّا يَجْمَعُونَ In the bounty of Allah and His mercy, let them rejoice. Having established that, I say, May Allah bless your Ramadan and accept from you. May Allah honor you by granting you the opportunity to gain the most out of the Ramadan, this Ramadan and may it be sincere for His sake. I ask Allah that you be among the special ones whose necks are marked as saved from the punishment of hell. We'll have daily khawatir or reminders, inshaAllah ta'ala, after Salat al-Asr. And we'll try to keep them around 10 minutes or so. They'll be sure, I'll try my best to keep them around 10 minutes. Uh, they'll be sure so they will not take us away from our ibadah. Because every second of your life is precious and more precious is every second of Ramadan. Putting these talks into action is the purpose of these talks and of all knowledge. When a verse is mentioned, and it starts during the talk, when a verse is mentioned, imagine if, is, as if Allah is speaking to you and you're ready to act on it. When you hear a hadith, imagine that the Prophet wasallam is before you and you're attentively listening, contemplating and ready to act upon it. When you hear a story of the Salaf, let your mind flow, black, b b f flow, flow back to their time as if you're consulting them and sitting there enjoying their precious advice. In Ramadan, the Prophet ﷺ compared those who succeed and get their forgiveness from Allah like one whose neck is freed, which means like a slave that's been freed. Why this example or parable? This example is because in order to understand it, you have to understand the fiqh rule. Maybe it'll help you understand it better. In divorce, marriage, and freeing a slave, whether one is joking or serious, if he says a woman's divorced, joking or serious, and if he frees a slave, joking or serious, there's no going back on it. If a human with all his deficient qualities can't go back on freeing a slave, when he does so, he can't go back on it. Imagine the Almighty Al Ghafur, Al Rahim, Al Kareem. If he frees your neck from hell, do you think he'll go back on his word? Ta'ala Allah an thalika aluwan kabira. This is the month where forgiveness comes to you from every angle. Not getting forgiveness from Allah in this month means you worked hard not to get the forgiveness from Allah. As Ramadan starts, keep these three hadith in your mind about attaining the forgiveness of Allah. Man sama Ramadan iman wa ihtisaban ghufira law ma taqaddam min dhanbi. Whoever fasts for Ramadan in faith and seeking the reward from Allah, he'll be forgiven. Two words in these hadith, iman and ihtisab. Iman here, in all the three of these hadith, iman here means Ibn Hajar, rahimahullah said, it's knowing and believing, faith and knowing and believing, it's obligatory upon you. Ihtisab means that you're seeking the reward only from Allah. What reward? What reward are we talking about? Forgiveness from Allah, does it stop there? No. Next freed, certain people chosen that their next be freed from hellfire. Stop there? No. Every day you get golden moments where your dua is accepted. 
Every day you get mountains of deeds, only Allah calculates it for you. Every day you fast, you're 70 seasons, 70 years away from hell, if not more. 70, if you finish Ramadan properly, 70 times 30, you got 2,100 years away from hell. So the first hadith says, whoever fasts for the sake of Allah, Iman and Ihtisa, for the sake of Allah, he gets forgiveness. The second hadith has the near same ending, but the different beginning. Man qama Ramadan ahta imanan wa ihtisaban ghufira lahum ma taqaddama min dhabi. Let's say you had some type of deficiency in fasting. There's another shara'ah, another opportunity to attain the forgiveness of Allah. Pray in the nights. What we call taraweeh. There's even a third shara'ah. Man qama laylat al-qadri imanan wa ihtisaban ghufira lahum ma taqaddama min dhabi. Every one of these three hadith is in the sihah. Let's say someone had a deficiency in fasting. The first hadith. He had a deficiency in praying the night, Qiyam, the Taraweeh. Then here's the third shot at it, the night of destiny, the night of Laylatul Qadr, that by itself is sufficient to attain Allah's forgiveness. All three of these hadith have the same ending. You'll be forgiven. You'll be forgiven. If you fast the days of Ramadan, if you pray the nights of Ramadan, if you pray the night of Laylatul Qadr, and in between all that forgiveness, Allah gives multiple folds of reward to get you to the high ranks of Jannah. So if you don't get forgiven by Allah, you sure know how to dodge. But you're dodging forgiveness of the ghafoor. You're avoiding rahmah and mercy pouring at you from every angle. Rahmah and forgiveness you desperately need for blessings in this life. And more import importantly, for entry to Jannah. So much chances for forgiveness and attaining the high rank that the mercy of mankind, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Rahmatan lil and Ruh al-Qudus Jibreel made dua on one who misses out on this opportunity. Abu Huraira radiallahu an, in a hadith, in authentic hadith, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was ascending the member. And then he said, Ameen, every step. Ameen, Ameen. They said, O Prophet of Allah, why did you say Ameen? He said, Jibreel came to me and said, May Allah rub his nose in the dust. The person who Ramadan comes and does not get forgiven by Allah. So I said, Ameen. Ramadan's superiority comes in knowing what you do in Ramadan is extra. Extra reward, extra credit. It's knowing that it's time to make up for what you missed out in the past 11 months. What you read of Quran, what you do of Salah, what you say of Dhikr is worth more than any other month. Multiple folds of reward, neither I nor anyone can calculate it. That's why the Prophet وسلم, said in a hadith Qudsi, Kullu amal ibn Adam lahu illa siyam fa innahu li wa ana So much reward that Allah calculates it for you to honor you. It's for him. He says it's for me and I shall reward you. The reward continues to elevate, continues to elevate in its value until it reaches the summit peak of getting reaching, will be in worth 83.33 years, a thousand months. One rak'ah in Laylatul Qadr ends up being worth as if you did it for 30,000 nights. One subhanAllah will be end up worth it as if you did it for 30,000 nights. That path to seek in the summit of Firdaus is a content path of ibadah, worshiping Allah. When you take off on that path, and now's the time to start. You see plains, valleys, hills, mountains. And on the left hand side of that path, you're going to see bandits and thugs. These thugs, these robbers, these creeps, these thieves. On that path and on that journey, they don't want your money. They don't want your wealth. They don't want your life. They want something more precious than all that, more dear than that. They're after your deen and your iman and your time to attain that. In order to reach safety and salvation, a person on that path and course needs guidance. He needs a map to direct him to the safe routes and the hiding spots when the bandits pop up, when to move faster, when to maintain a pace. And that's what we're going to be talking about in this khawatir, inshallah. In Ramadan, it's a virtuous season and a time for diligence. It's general throughout the year, but more so in Ramadan. It's our duty to recommend to each other the truth and the haqq, to inspire each other for ibadah and righteousness, as in Surah Al-Asr, wa tawasaw bil haqq wa tawasaw bil sabr. No one is exempted from recommended, and no one is above accepting recommendation. Many in Ramadan veer off the course of what Ramadan was intended for. In some cultures, it's become 
a time for taking one away from Allah rather than taking him closer to Allah. It's become stripped of what it was intended for. Some spend in vain, others in mubah, and others in clear sin. It is the few who stay on the path, avoiding the bandits, speeding their path, their path on their way to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The shaitan has been shackled and he's one cause of the sin. The other cause is your nafs. If one is worse in Ramadan, he can diagnose his nafs al-ammara bisu as having worse tendencies than the shaitan. Now is the time to subdue and defeat that nafs. And as the shaitan is shackled, you need to shackle your nafs al-ammara bisu. The evil inclination. Just like the shaitan was shackled. You got to shackle your nafs al-ammara bisu. Ramadan is a therapy for one's iman. Because as time goes by, your iman wears out. When you wash your clothes and wear them, time and time again, you wear them out. When metal comes into contact with air and moisture over time, there's a process of oxidation called uh, oxidation. Uh, when it occurs, rust begins to form on the metal. And that's the hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Abdullah ibn Umar al Tabarani. Inna al imana la yakhluku fi jawfi ahadikum kama yakhluku al thawb fasalu Allah an yujadid al imana fi qulubikum. Faith wears out of the heart like any one of your clothes wears out. So ask Allah to renew your faith in your heart. You ask Allah and you act upon it too. Ramadan dusts your heart off. It repatches your clothes. It revives your iman and it ignites it for a takeoff. You start off this imanic therapy by directing your inclination, inflating your desires, shackling your inclination like the shaitan was shackled. If you leave eating and drinking and your wife, which is otherwise halal on normal days, this is a boot camp to train you never to do what's haram throughout the entire year. You must understand an important concept in your relationship with Allah. The process starts with you, with you. It starts with you. You have to take the first step forward. In the Hadith Al-Qudsi, Allah said, I am as my servant thinks of me. I am with him when he mentions me. You got to mention him first. You have to mention him first. You see the Hadith? If he mentions me to himself, I mention him to myself. Who starts? If you mention. He said, if you mention. And if he mentions me in an assembly, I mention him in an assembly greater than that. إِذَا تَقَرَّبَ الْعَبْدُ إِلَيَّ شِبْرًا تَقَرَّبْتُ إِلَيَّ ذِرَعًا If he comes near to me, a hand's length, I come to him, an arm's length or a cubit. وَإِذَا تَقَرَّبَ إِلَيَّ ذِرَعًا تَقَرَّبْتُ إِلَيَّ ذِرَعًا If he comes to me a cubit length, I go to him the distance of two outstretched arms. وَإِذَا أَتَانِ يَمْشِ أَتَيْتُ هَرْوَلَ Comes to me walking, I come to him at the speed of running. In every one of these hadith, in uh, sentences of the hadith, the relationship, it starts with you. And then Allah responds. It's consistent in the verses. You got to invoke me, then I'll answer. You start. You start the invocation. Then Allah will give you. Remember me, I will remember you. You got to start it. So you got to start your relationship with Allah. Ramadan is the season to ignite your longing to Allah. Just like when winter approaches, you go and ignite your furnace, you got to ignite your longing and yearning to Allah. Ignite your longing and yearning to Allah so you can do the worship in this month with pleasure, delight, and enjoyment. If you don't ignite your longing to Allah, you can't do your worship in joy. We want you not only to worship Allah, but we want you to do it with enjoyment. There's a difference between one who fasts and hates it. Wrongdoers. Zalimun li nafsi. And one who fasts for the sake of Allah. It just fasts. Muqtasid. There are some who follow the middle course. And then there's a third category. Above all that, the supreme one who fasts and enjoys it. Sabiqun bil khayrat. The ones who are the foremost in their good deeds. There's one who does taraweeh and qiyam and he can't wait for the imam to do salam. And there's another one who does it and he's excited as he's standing before Allah. And one who just does it just to do it. Some are superficial and traditional in their worship. And others enjoy when their stomach is rumbling. 
gurgling and growling because his mind escapes his body and realizing how beautiful this fast is. He realizes how much he loves the one he's leaving all these desires for. His stomach is growling, but his heart is laughing at how much further and further this is taking him from Jahannam. And how further and further is getting him to Firdaus. He stands on his feet the long hours, excited, enthusiastic, eager. Because his mind is with the reward of where the stand is going to land him. A palace. That the ceiling of it is the arsh of Allah. Neighboring Allah. Subhanahu wa ta'ala in Jannah. That's why you need to ignite your longing to Allah in order to enjoy your ibadah. And inshallah, we'll talk about that in one of the sessions. Today was slightly longer than what I said. Uh, we'll try to keep it shorter tomorrow, inshallah. And, and it'll be after, again, after Asr, not after Maghrib. أسأل الله العلي الكبير أن يجعل شهر رمضان الكريم مكثرا للحسنات ومذهبا للسيئات مفرجا للكروب ومزيلا للهموم مذهبا للأحزان ومدخلا الفرحة في القلوب اللهم ارزقنا الأجر فيه واغفر لنا الذنوب فيه اللهم ارزقنا السعادة ما حينا وارض عنا اللهم ارزقنا التقوى واليقين وصلى الله على نبينا محمد والحمد لله رب العالمين